Hello everyone and welcome to our video demonstration on how to complete performance appraisals for the employees that you manage. The purpose of performance appraisals is to enhance the communication channels between you and your direct reports, ensuring that you celebrate employee achievements, uncover any areas requiring further development, and proactively focus on your employees' professional development goals for the future. You will see that the process is simple and straightforward. Please treat this demonstration as a guide only, as your organization may conduct their performance review processes slightly differently. The example manager is Casey, who is the general manager for Sandwich Eats, a popular food chain. Casey manages four employees who directly report to her. Sandwich Eats is conducting their internal performance reviews using Enable HR's online performance review module, otherwise known as OPR. Casey will need to conduct a performance appraisal for each of her direct reports. Enable HR's OPR module is usually set up by your organization's HR or leadership teams, who define the key result areas, key performance indicators, and rating scales for each job position. Once launched, your employees will be prompted to conduct a self-assessment. You, as their manager, will be prompted to conduct a performance assessment for each of your direct reports, once you have both completed your assessments, both you and your employees can then review and discuss the combined performance review report. There is also the opportunity to input final ratings and comments to conclude the performance review process. This will issue the final performance review report. It is important to note that the OPR provides organizations with the option to gain feedback from two or more assessors. The additional assessor can be another manager, team coordinator, or peer, for example, who is invited into the performance review process to provide their feedback and insights based on their dealings or working relationship with that employee. The experience for additional assessors when completing their assessment is the same as we will cover today. However, they will not receive the summary report and are only included in any employee discussions if invited into the process. Once HR has launched its process, you receive an email prompting you to log in and complete your appraisals. In this example, there is a welcome message from HR confirming details for the performance review process and who to contact if there are any further questions. This message will either disappear once expired or you can simply dismiss the message to remove it from your notice board. You will notice that there is an inbox notification waiting for you to action. When you click this notification, it will take you to your listed tasks. As you can see, as a manager, you are prompted to complete four performance reviews, one for each of your direct reports. In this example, Casey will access and assess the performance review of Joe, a business support officer. From here, you can commence Joe's assessment by clicking on the task. You will first be informed as to the performance review period that is being reviewed. In this example, Joe's performance review is being assessed for the period between 30 June 2019 and 1 July 2020. Before you can commence his assessment, you are prompted to review any flagged notes against his electronic HR record, if there are any. As you can see, Joe has recently some, had some performance issues where he has been struggling to minimize his distractions at work. Notes of this nature are flagged to assist you with your evaluation. And this is especially important now as Joe is working from home more than ever. This is something that Casey will need to keep in mind when assessing Joe's performance. When you click on the first KRA button, you are then prompted to rate their performance based on the detail KPIs and provide context for each rating using the comments box. Let's do this one together. Up the top, you'll notice the title of the key result area or KRA, um, as well as which job position it covers. In this case, it's a business support officer. The key performance indicators that are being assessed against are listed just below. And then the rating scale is below that. And you can add any additional comments here. So in this case, fully meets the expectations. And Casey will add some notes for further support on this rating. Now, this automatically saves your work as you go. So you can come back to it later if needed. 
As we work through each assigned key result error, you'll notice that you'll be asked for a rating, a comment, or both. Let's complete the rest together. So here you can see the second key result area. Um, and Casey had already started on this and had selected fully meeting expectations and had left a comment here for Joe. Now here's an example of a KRA that has been assigned that does not have a rating scale. It's more of a feedback tool. And in this case, a comment is required in order to progress to the next key result area. And this is similar to the one before, but in this case, it's capturing what the biggest challenge or hurdle was for Joe this performance review period. Now this is an example of an objective regarding improving communication in this case. And this has been set in previous performance review rounds. If the employee does not have any objectives linked to their account, this will not appear. Once you have completed all ratings and comments, you will finalize your performance review at the review and submit page. So I'll just add comments to this and review and submit. This page provides a summary of your assessment and will allow you to complete any missed items or amend as needed. In this case, let's assume you are happy with your assessment and therefore can now submit your employee appraisal. This appraisal has been submitted. Now we're on to step two, where you receive the initial performance review summary, meet with your manager, and receive the final performance review document. So once your employee has also completed the self-assessment, an initial performance review summary of report will be automatically emailed to you, as you can see here. You can access the report from within your self-service account by clicking on My Organization and Group Performance Reviews. As you can see, the ratings and comments input by both you as the manager and your employee are displayed together in the report. Generally, the next step in the performance review process is for you to meet with your employee to discuss the report and agree on any professional development objectives and goals for the future. As a part of this meeting, you and your employee also agree on a final rating for each accessible item, which you will need to input into OPR as per the same process. You can do this either in the meeting or after the meeting. Once you have completed the final assessment, you will both be issued a final appraisal summary report. As part of the performance review process, there are often new objectives and or goals set to facilitate employee professional development for the next performance review period. There are often several ways to do this. Your employee can enter these objectives via their self-service for you to review and approve within Enable HR. Or these objectives can be entered directly against employees' electronic HR record within Enable HR if you have the requisite access. And you as their manager can also enter these objectives via self-service when you are inputting the final ratings and comments. Let me show you how. You click on add a development objective. You can choose the type. In this case, operational or strategic will show on the next performance review. Here's one I prepared earlier for Joe, where we're looking at enhancing the productivity. You can add a brief description. You can even detail what you expect as a manager from the next objective. So when it comes to performance reviews for next time, it's all here waiting for you. And the key performance indicators are important here as well because these are the ones that can be measured against after selecting your rating scale. For this one, I just chose a standard five point scale. Once this is done, the performance review process is now complete. After you hit review and submit, and submit this performance review. If you have any questions, please contact the account administrators within your organization. It is usually members of your leadership and or your HR team members. From the team here at Enable HR, 
Thanks for watching this online performance review training video, and we'll see you in the next one.